If I had to choose just one out of all the standard reports that GA4 offers out of the box, it would be Pages and Screens report. And it's because it resembles so much of the report that we're all used to from Universal. It's called All Pages. First thing that I look at when I open this report is this right-hand side bar graph, which shows how do pages perform over a time span that you chose. Now, this line chart here is giving you a little bit more insight because you can see how each page performs on any given day. So, for example, you can see an interesting spike or something unusual that happens and identify what goes on in there. Now I'm going to go straight into an advanced topic and show you how can you exclude a page. In this particular example, this is the home page or website. And I don't think that it should compare to other blog post pages that rank here. So if I wanted to exclude it, I would go into customizing of this report and choose to add a filter. And for the dimension, I would type here page title then choose it from the list here and say, perfect, let's exclude that page. I have to choose it again and apply. And now my homepage is not here mixed up with other blog posts. Why is this advanced? Because this wouldn't be possible if I didn't add a custom definition that relies on that particular parameter. We call it with the same name. For the sake of clarity, you can name it any way you want to. But this is a good practice to use the parameter name across the description and the custom definition name. Let's look at the Google official docs where GA4 states that following parameters are collected by default with every event. One of them is page title, but you would not be able to exclude a result from a table or a chart by using that particular parameter unless you previously defined it as a custom definition in the admin section. Now let's go back to pages and screens and see what else does it have to offer. If we look at the table down here, it offers an additional data about the pages that you're looking at. So you can count views, total users, this is a calculated metric used per user. Engagement, which is a very cool feature of GA4. Previously, we relied on bounce rate, but it was a dubious metric. Then we have all the events connected to each page. And also we have the conversions. Now, if DDU website was selling something, it would be wise to add transactions. But so far, conversions boil down to purchase, which is an automatic conversion zero results in this account. Success pages for different types of lead generation strategies. And basketball game is an example conversion that uh, is used on Google Analytics for CYA program. This report here is also valuable because it offers a nice starting point for customizations. And you can add different dim dimensions here. You can customize the metrics in the table. For example, if we were doing e-commerce, we, we could easily say e-commerce purchases here, apply that, and that metric will come up here in this table down there. You can turn off these graphic representations of your data. I personally prefer tables to graphics. And also you can customize summary cards here. I hope that this video even though pretty fundamental, gives you a nice overview of the Pages and Screens report and the advanced trick that I told you about adding these automatically collected parameters for the all events in GA4. Go ahead and go into your admin section and add them straight away in your custom definitions because they will be pretty useful down the line when you want to dissect that data based on these very parameters. If you liked the video, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel and see you in the next GA4 topic.